We've ended up at Dumfries and Galloway, uh, where we've been invited to a farm to talk to various different people from the community about the big changes they're making here to try and tackle the climate crisis. Some of the solutions have been in process for quite some time, so they are really innovative in this area. I'm working on the Galloway Lens Project, which is a lottery funding project. We're embedded within Dumfries and Galloway Council. Dumfries and Galloway Council are actually doing some pretty exciting things regarding the net zero target. The Dumfries and Galloway is committed as a region to be a net zero carbon region by 2025, which I think is the joint most ambitious in the UK. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of work that has to happen. That's not something the council is going to be able to do by itself. So yeah. what the council is trying really hard to do is to reach out to businesses, to communities, farms that were here on today, and try and involve everybody in this zero carbon. Why have you decided to go so big, so bold, so ambitious in this region? I think Dumfries and Galloway has actually has a bit of a history of innovation in this subject. We've got the first onshore consented wind farm in Scotland, we've got the first offshore wind farm in the UK, we've got a hydro scheme built in the 1930s, the first all river system, we've got a lot of peatland as well. So there's a lot of carbon reduction assets actually right. in Dumfries and Galloway. So you and I have think that council it's a natural tendency towards it, but I think the council's been trying to align ourselves with this new developing field of carbon reduction and trying to put Dumfries and Galloway on the map. There's an exciting thing going on in Dumfries and Galloway. I think people are trying to harness the opportunities that this large rural area has to play a part in this national net zero challenge. And so it's quite interesting to see lots of different sectors starting to come around to this sustainability and net zero challenge, which all aligns really well with the council's aim of being one of the first net zero regions in the UK. The big question, or two big questions for you. One of them is, what... Britain drove the Industrial Revolution, that's the kind of given. Do you think we could drive the Green Revolution too? It's written on our t-shirts. This is the big question we are trying to ask. That that could not be a better that could not be a better phrase for actually the background and the involvement that we're looking to have in COP because we're saying we've got the first all-river hydro scheme built in the 1930s, still generating electricity today. 75% of what the whole region needs is coming from the hydro scheme. We've got the first onshore wind farm in Scotland, we've got the first offshore wind farm in the UK just off the coast. We've got these history of innovation in Dumfries and Galloway. And I think Dumfries and Galloway has always played its part in the Scottish and UK game. But what we need to start doing is going a little bit overt and saying Dumfries and Galloway is where it's happening. Yeah. And I think maybe harnessing exactly the yeah. innovation that's happened previously to try and drive the next revolution. Thank you very much for bringing such a message of motivation, which I think is what we really need now. No more climate again, but solutions. Thank you. We've um, been taken to Paradise, or a field called Paradise, which is uh, the landing spot, takeoff spot for me, um, but also a good spot to talk to a few of the locals a bit more about, uh, yeah, the climate solutions uh, in the area. You've obviously thought a lot about our carbon footprint and food. How long has that been an issue for you? Yeah, well, if, most of my life, if I'm honest. Um, it's always been a question that the way that we eat meat and the amount of meat that we eat as a nation has been completely out of balance. We eat too much industrially processed meat, which is having a drastic impact on the environment and our health as a nation. And we need to get back to eating less meat, but eating the right meat. So meat which has been produced ethically with a lower carbon footprint. So and you made a very convincing case to everybody during the demonstration. What would you say to politicians uh, in this country, but also at COP26 at COP making decisions, about what you would like from them uh, if we're going to shift our food system to one that's way more sustainable? Yeah, well, I think, I have no doubt that over the next two generations, this is going to be the most important issue that our children, our grandchildren are going to face. And so the message to the politician is we need to start raising awareness about which types of meat we should be eating and encouraging people to do that, moving away from the large-scale industrialized processes and supporting our local farmers where provenance can be assured. And can we feed everybody like, like that? Yeah, if we eat less meat, absolutely. Um, and as I've already said, the amount of meat that we eat is just off the scale. We should not be eating as much as we are. And if we do choose to eat meat, it should be of a much higher quality in, in every way, basically. And people, parents, for example, also shouldn't feel the need to feed their kids meat every day. I think Absolutely there's, a bit, of a, there's yeah. a bit of an obsession with that. Yeah. They just don't need it, do they? Absolutely. Just a, a couple of hundred grams a week um, is, is all we need, really. 
um, we're eating way too much of it and so a much greater focus on again good quality dairy and most importantly green leafy veg and legumes and pulses this is what we need to be eating more of and we need more chefs to make all that stuff really exciting people are used yeah. to kind of easy cooking of meat aren't they I think maybe that's a, maybe an easy way of getting flavor but do you absolutely think, yeah yeah there are so many cuisines around the world that lend themselves naturally to great vegetarian and vegan cookery um, so when we think about Indian and Thai and Chinese They're all in this country already uh, absolutely um, all of the ingredients are readily available and you know here in Britain and especially in Scotland we do have a great source of really good fruit and vegetables and we need to be eating more of them thank you very much it's a pleasure absolutely for the fantastic cooking and for the inspirational message a key thing we're trying to do is hear the climate message and solutions from people outside of the environment kind of yeah. world generally so uh -huh. yeah thanks we're very supportive and good luck to you on your mission thank you